Next, we are going to introduce a whole new framework in statistics, which is built around the concept of a random variable. In statistics, a random variable represents an unknown quantity whose value depends on chance, or the outcome of an experiment. What is the difference between an algebraic variable and a random variable? In algebra, a variable represents an unknown quantity. For example, let x be the number of siblings that Bobbert has. We do not know x, but we can definitely find out by asking Bobbert or by setting up and solving an equation. Therefore, x is an example of an algebraic variable. On the other hand, in statistics, a random variable is an unknown quantity whose value depends on chance or the outcome of some experiment. For example, let x be the number of siblings of a randomly selected person in the class. We do not know x until the person is randomly selected. So here the experiment is selecting a person. Therefore, x is an example of a random variable. To distinguish between the random and the algebraic variables, we are going to label the random variables with capital letters. Now it is important to distinguish between the events and random variables. Since the letters from the beginning of the alphabet, such as A, B, C, D, and so on, are mainly used to label the events, we would reserve the letters from the end of the alphabet, such as Q, R, S, T, U, and so on, to label the random variables. When making probability statements, do not confuse the notation that we use for events with the one that we use for random variables. For example, if A is an event and X is a random variable, the probability of A does make sense, but the probability of x doesn't. In order to make a probability statement about a random variable, one must create an event first. For example, if x is the number of siblings of a randomly selected student, then x equals 2 is an event in which the number of siblings of a randomly selected person is 2. Now, the probability of x equals 2 denotes the probability of such event. We are still going to perform the same experiments as before, but from now on we will keep an eye on the outcomes and events whose verbal descriptions can be quantified as in the following examples. The product of the dice when two fair dice are rolled. The number of sixes when four fair dice are rolled. The number of cars in a randomly selected family. The household income of a randomly selected household the lifetime of a randomly selected bulb, and many others. Note that we can use a random variable to denote the outcome of a roll of a die. But the same cannot be done with the toss of a coin, because the outcome of the experiment is not a number. However, if we assign 0 to heads and 1 to tails, or any other combination of numbers, then we can introduce a random variable to represent the result of a toss of a coin. Since we are dealing with quantities, there are two types of random variables, discrete and continuous. A discrete random variable is a random variable whose all possible values can be listed. A continuous random variable is a random variable whose all possible values form an interval. Now we can classify the random variables as discrete or continuous. Do you think the number of credit cards of a randomly selected person is discrete or continuous? The correct answer is discrete, because the possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Do you think the lifetime of a randomly selected bulb is discrete or continuous? The correct answer is continuous, because it can be any number greater than 0. Do you think the size of a randomly selected household is discrete or continuous? The correct answer is discrete, because the possible values are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Do you think the monthly income of a randomly selected household is discrete or continuous? The correct answer is continuous, because it can be any number greater than 0. Now that we introduced the concept of a random variable, we will focus on the properties and applications of discrete and continuous random variables in this exact order. 